بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس دس از ڈاکٹر شگفتان دلیپ پروفیسر آف زولوجی یونیورسٹی آف ایجوکیشن آئی ایم ہیئر ٹو ٹیچ یو دا کورس آف زو جوگرفی اینڈ پیلیونٹولوجی ٹوڈے وی ول اسٹڈی دا ایولوشن آف ہارس Michael Horais, a renowned paleontologist, said that the evolution of horses as more like a bush than a tree with starts and stops and jumps in the development of genetic traits. As it is obvious from the cladogram proposed by Kathleen Hunt, another famous paleontologist, Before we study the process of evolution of horse, we need to have a bird's eye view of the climate-driven diversity of vegetation leading to changes in the body structure and function of horse in different epochs. Starting from Eocene, it is estimated that the earth settled down to its present size between 4 and 5 billion years ago. earliest life forms developed about 2 billion years ago and during eocene the western hemisphere the climate in most of the lowland was subtropical and moist palm trees with alligators living as far north as nebraska and dakotas magnolias and fig trees flourished in alaska forests covered much of the land and the animals that flourished during this period had to be able to eat fruits and soft foliage from trees in oligocene a gradual long term cooling trend began in north america about 38 million years ago which lasted through the pleistocene ice ages The climate in North America gradually became drier and vast grasslands replaced the forests. This change in climate was a critical element in the evolution of horse species because they were the first animals to take advantage of the new habitat and source of food. The new species began to develop tougher teeth to grind up the grasses. They developed longer legs as it became more important for the animals to run and escape from their predators horses began to grow larger for more strength during the miocene epoch the evolution of the horse was accelerated and split into various branches global cooling continued and ice sheet was formed In North America horses shared grassy prairies with the rhinoceros, camels, cats, mastodons and raccoons. As the Miocene horses began to specialize in eating grasses, several changes occurred. First, the teeth became better suited for chewing harsh and abrasive grass. Small crests on the teeth enlarged. and connected to become a series of ridges for grinding there was a gradual increase in the height of the tooth crowns and these tooth crowns became harder due to the development of a cement layer secondly these horses started to become specialized runners there was a simultaneous increase in body size leg and face length and most significantly the horses began to stand permanently on tiptoe which helped them in running pliocene is the period of development of the first species that could be considered true equines as well as the first primate species that may be considered direct ancestors of homo sapiens or humans Generally the horse species got larger and developed its ability to exploit grass as its primary diet. Most of them still had small side toes but at least two separate groups of horses lost those and instead 
they developed side ligaments to help stabilize the central toe during running early as three simple equus species were zebra like with straight shoulders thick necks short and narrow skulls ropey tails medium sized ears striped legs and some striping on the back they quickly diversified into at least 12 new species which coexisted with other one toed horses that were evolving on their own paths late in the period about 2.6 million years ago glaciers began to descend in north america and the horses began to migrate to another continents they probably crossed over the bering land bridge between what is now alaska and russian siberia some spread across asia mid east and north africa while some entered africa and diversified into modern zebras other equus species spread into south america while the true horse equus cabellus spread out Asia, Middle East and Europe. Pleistocene is the period popularly known as the Ice Age. We know that huge sheets of ice covered much of the earth during the Pleistocene epoch, but modern geologists believe that glaciers occupied only small areas of the earth at any one time and during the glacial stages temperatures would drop on average 5 to 7 degrees celsius these slight average differences had huge impact on the animals living through the period the ice changed the surface of the earth and provide a suitable climate for huge ice age mammals the mastodon and saber tooth tiger thrived the modern horse equus developed and the first true humans appeared during this epoch toward the end of the epoch the glaciers receded and the climate changed again and along with this the huge mammals disappeared from the fossil record man continued to evolve and adapt and recent theories suggest that humans by hunting these mammals contributed to their extinction It was also during this period that horses died out on the North American continent. The vast grasslands that nurtured early horse species had been covered with ice. New predators including humans challenged them and equus disappeared from North America for thousands of years. Development of the horse took place over the course of at least 55 million years ago during Eocene. You can see different types of horses which we will study later on during this topic one by one. Hyracotherium or Eohippus is the small ancient forest animal of the early eocene that lived about 55 to 45 million years ago it is also known as dawn horse its fossils have been recovered from north america and europe its height was 1.4 to 1.7 feet it resembled with a dog because of having arched back long neck short snout short four legs long tail and long hind legs it browsed on fruit 
and soft foliage. It resembled with deer for being timid, flighty, and agile. Molars of the Euhippus were suitable for eating leaves and fruit. The cusps of the molars were somewhat connected in low ridges. During its life of 20 million years, it gradually started eating more leaves and less fruit. It did not change much in other respects during the remainder of the Eocene. The primary evolutionary changes were in dentition only. The skull lacked large, flexible muzzle of the modern horse. Size and shape of the cranium indicated that the brain was far smaller and less complex than that of today's horse. The limbs of Eohippus were relatively long in proportion to the body. All major bones were separated. The legs were flexible and could easily rotate. Wrist and ankle joints were low. Feet had cushions similar to a dog's but with small hooves instead of nails. Front feet had four toes with a big toe did not touch the ground and the hind feet were three-toed. It lived in tropical forest. It made many adjustments to a running and vegetarian life. Although its fossils have been recovered both from old and new world, but the evolution of the horse took place chiefly in North America. This figure is showing the toes. Second, third, fourth, and fifth toe. This specimen of Hyracotherium has been discovered in the Green River Formation. Orohippus is a genus from Middle Eocene that lived about 45 million years ago. It evolved from Eohippus through gradual series of changes. It still looked like a dog. It was slightly larger than Eohippus. It had leaner body with longer head, more slender forelegs, longer hind legs, which made it good jumper. The legs still had cushions. The outer toes were missing. There were four toes on front feet and three on hind feet. The biggest change from Eohippus to Orohippus were the teeth. The first premolar is smaller and the last developed into a normal one. The ridges became higher and both these changes suggest that Orohippus was able to eat more fibrous plants. This figure is showing impression of Orohippus. And this is showing the skeleton. The back is curved. And head and legs are larger than in Eohippus. Epihippus was a genus from the late Eocene. It resembled in size and in the structure of the limbs with those of Eohippus. A system of continuous crests or ridges running the length of the molars and molariform premolars occurred in Epihippus that were retained by all subsequent ancestors of the modern horse. Mesohippus appeared suddenly in the late Eocene, approximately 40 million years ago. 
the climate in north america became drier and the first grasses appeared the forest changed into grassland with shrubs similar to steppes or prairies it was slightly larger than eohippus and about 2 feet in height it no longer looked like as much like a dog its back was less arched and neck and face was a bit longer it had a depression on the skull it was more horse like than its eocene ancestors it had larger brain the snout was more muzzle like the teeth became harder in reaction to the harder plant material the last two premolars had the same shape as the molars the teeth remained adapted to browsing the legs were longer and more slender enabling it to be more agile the fourth toe on the forefoot had been reduced to a vestige so both the forefeet and the hind feet carried three functional toes and a foot pad the middle toe was stronger than the outer toe and carried more weight Myohippus existed about 38.5 to 19 million years ago in North America. It coexisted with Mesohippus for about 4 million years. It was somewhat larger than its predecessor and had a longer head. The ankle joints were slightly different. Its molars had an extra ridge which is indicative of a more fibrous diet. Some kinds of myohippus returned to the woods with three well-developed toes while other remains on prairies with only one well-developed middle toe. About 23 to 5.3 million years ago, myohippus developed into three major lines. The heavily built antitherium which was three-toed browsers small sized pygmy which became extinct very soon and the third line was grass eaters which later on evolved into modern horses the facial fossa in myohippus was deeper and more expanded it began to show a variable crest on its upper cheek teeth In later horse species this crest became a characteristic feature The third line which evolved from myohippus show greatest changes The molars became higher and there were ridges making them better suited for grinding the harder plants Molars grew hard layer of cement body size leg and skull length increased and the bones of the legs grew together these horses stood on the tips of their toes and hooves and therefore more upright they were more suited to run on hard ground and the flexible leg rotation was limited parahippus evolved in early middle miocene in north america about 23 to 15 million years ago It is one of the grass eaters which evolved from Myohippus. Parahippus and its descendants adapted for grass eating. Grasses at that time were becoming widespread across North American plains therefore provided Parahippus a vast food supply. As grass is a much coarser food than succulent leaves and it requires a different kind of tooth structure so the cheek teeth had to develop large and stronger crests and adapt to side to side motion of the lower jaw which is necessary for grinding grass blades 
Mary Chippers looked like a real horse as we know it today. It lived 18 to 10 million years ago in North America in Middle Miocene. It must have looked like a modern pony with 3.3 feet height. It was not only an effective grazer but also a fast runner due to its long legs. It had wider molars with a higher crown and a hard layer of cement which were used to grind the hard grasses of the steppe. It stood on one toe. The two smaller ones with little hooves were perhaps needed for sport and probably only touched the ground while the horse was running. Its skull was similar to that of the modern horse. Its jaw was deeper and muzzle became elongated. Brain was larger with larger cerebellum, making it smarter and more agile than the earlier horses. Eyes moved farther back to accommodate the large teeth roots. This is the imaginative picture of Mary Chippus. And this is the forefoot showing the central one working toe while the side ones as splint bones. This was about the evolution of horse. I am sure you have learnt it. Thank you and Allah Hafiz.